Hello again, Michael Freeberg here from beautiful North Carolina. And before today's shave, let me just let you know that for the next three or four weeks, there will be no videos going up. It's just not gonna be possible given my, uh, my work schedule. So unfortunately, this will be the last one for probably at least three weeks, maybe as long as a month. So I hope this will tide you over. All right, well, you know what they say. They say you should only change one thing at a time to make sure that you keep the variables in check. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go crazy today. I'm gonna shave with a new razor, a new brush, a new soap, new aftershave, that's four. Well, you'll see, kind of three and a half. Today's razor is going to be the all aluminum standard razor. Here, I'll just show you the, uh, the top cap and the base plate, all aluminum, a beautiful, simple design. I'm going to be using a Kai blade. Trust me, it's a Kai blade, it's completely unmarked, incognito as it were. There we go. Now, this initial fit has been a little bit, it just seems like a bit of a gap. I am gonna put the washer on. And then the handle also, this is all the you know aircraft grade aluminum, beautiful simple design on the handle as well. I have to be very careful here about cross threading. I wanna make sure that that goes on nice and smooth. There we go. All right, so as you can see, three-piece razor. There is no overhang. A very simple, very clean, simple design. Um, if you take a careful look at the head though, you'll see that there is a significant blade exposure and a rather significant blade gap. I hope you can see that. Um, the blade is not very curved in the head, so for me that's always kind of a uh, something to pay attention to. The blade lays relatively flat uh, in the razor head and there is a significant blade gap and some blade exposure. So that means likely an aggressive razor and in fact it is and we'll talk about that during the shave. Today's brush. I have had this restored. This was something I picked up at the PIF table which is uh, someone was giving it away at the North Carolina Wet Savers meetup. It is an EverReady 200. It was obviously in very rough shape. It had a you know obviously a very old uh, very poor condition, uh, bore, bore not in there. I've had it lightly restored. It's been buffed backed up again, so you can see some very nice detail there in the uh, in the big light portion of the handle there. The lettering, which has been you know faded, it's kind of worn away, could not be fully uh, fully repainted. There just is not enough depth left there. So what what was there, what remains, has been lightly lettered in, and I've replaced the original knot with one of the uh, the maggard tuxedo knots. This is very soft tips with a lot of backbone. It does not splay open nearly as easily as my other synthetic brush. Feels a bit different in use and takes a little bit to get used to. All right, third product. I mean, I know you can't believe it, can you? Today's soap is going to be the Flying Hide from Noble Otter. This is another kind of full fat soap. This is a tallow-based soap. Um, it does include uh, grapeseed oil, and lanolin, so if you're sensitive to lanolin, just take a note, this does include lanolin, it does include coconut butter, as well as tussa silk. So this is a firm, a firm soap, not hard, but definitely a firm soap, slightly tacky to the touch. Uh, the scent, well, the scent flying high is kind of a reference to the, uh, the primary note there, which is leather. And to me, it is not the, uh, it's not the leather scent of a, like a new car leather scent or some, you know, sort of high-end leather good. This is the scent that leather gets when it's been used and worked and used and worked and maintained. You know, my grandfather was in the leather business. That's a very familiar scent. And the undertone there is of cedar wood and there's a bit of bergamot in there and well. And the scent, at least for me, uh, it just really comes together very nicely. It's got a wonderful leather scent to it, um, not kind of an overly fancified leather, just a really nice piece of working leather that's been properly maintained. It's a very familiar scent and just, uh, well, I really quite like it. I have, of course, pressed quite a bit of that into the loading bowl, so that's what remains from this week's uh, this week's portion. I'm going to wet the brush through. It doesn't need to be soaked, obviously, it's a synthetic brush, but it is nice to wet it through and warm it through. Um, it loosens it up a little bit in the warm water, but it's not like that brush somehow splays dramatically once it's warm. It still retains quite a bit of backbone. So let me go ahead and shake out a fair bit of the water. I've been loading 
pretty dry. I'm going to tip just a little bit of water in there. And you can see, yeah, the brush feels a bit different in use because it is really quite stiff. Just work it around a little bit. You can see that's pretty dry, so I'm going to add a bit of water. But it's already picking up quite a, quite a bit of soap. This is a thirsty soap, by the way, so if you overload, you're going to have to really work it and make sure you add enough water so that you get a really nice, slick, creamy lather, which has not been a problem to do. It just, if you overload, it takes a little bit more work. There we go. A little more. You can see what's happening inside there. Um, I have lost a bristle or two, fiber or two, the first couple shaves. Yeah, that's starting to sound pretty good. Let's take a look at the brush. I think that's gonna do quite nicely. All right, let me wet my face and put some water on the brush. Start building a lather and we'll start shaving. There we go. I'm just gonna drip a bit. Yeah, this brush really feels very different in use from my other synthetic brush, which is a lot floppier and a lot looser. I think just the knot is less dense and just, uh, you know, the fibrous is not quite as stiff. So yeah, at this point, definitely good coverage with the soap, but feel in the face says more water required. It's a little bit pasty. Uh... I don't think I've lost any lather yet, but it's sure to happen. All right, I'm just dripping a bit more water to the face of the brush. So I can force this brush display, but I think if I did that for too long, oh, there it goes. I think that might lead to a little bit of brush burn, so I've not really found it necessary, just lightly. Yeah, that's starting to look very, very nice. Just a little more water. It's there, but it's not really glossy enough yet, and it is gonna take on a kind of a nice glossy look, and it is also kind of, as you can see, starting to drip down the handle. And there we go. Just a loose piece, put that back in the bowl. Yeah, you can see what's happening there. That is looking very, very good. Two and a half days of growth, as always, for these Sunday shaves. There definitely comes a point late Saturday afternoon, early Saturday evening, where, well, you kind of wish you had shaved because itching has already started. All right, rinsed off my hands. Let's go ahead and start shaving. So the razor, um, is light. It's got, I think, a very simple, as you can see, a very simple head design. Um, definitely looks aggressive and, uh, well, guess what? It is a little bit aggressive. It is billed on their website as a razor that delivers the perfect shave. Now, well, of course, that's a little bit of marketing hyperbole. What I found is that blades, for example, don't seem to last as long on this. And my suspicion is, this is just a theory, that because there's a little less control over the blade edge, and the blade edge does move more when you're shaving, that just affects the edge a bit more quickly that it might in a razor that has a bit more control over the blade. As you can hear, a very loud razor. No issues with the, uh, with the amount of growth. You can certainly feel the blade, but it doesn't feel uncomfortable.
it's a little more sort of naked blade feel than I normally would like, but I definitely recognize why people really like this razor. Very obvious that the razor is doing what it's supposed to do. It's just tearing through the hair, no issues. Hundred percent less shave with this blade, though. Have to see how it holds up for that last pass. All right, rinse. As you can see, that is really taken off a huge amount of the hair there. Now it's time for the across the grain. Wet face, just reapply the lather. May have to reload for the last pass, but we'll see. So there's a couple things about this razor. It is loud, so you just have to take that into account and sort of resist the urge because you can still hear what's happening that you press down because it is also Kind of a pretty naked blade feel and so if you exert too much pressure you're going to get some razor burn or irritation i think there's no way around it so light touch just go easy let the noise be your guide but don't let the noise fool you into trying to just push through it a little bit all right let's see how it goes for this across the grain Handle is not slippery in use. You know, often when you look at these uh, sort of non-patterned smooth handles, understandably people are a bit nervous that they're gonna to be too slick in use, but that has not proven to be the case here. Yeah, this razor is really loud. Just being careful there because that blade is starting to get a little bit close, so. Yeah, after the first shave or so, I, you know, I was suspicious that this would not be a comfortable shave. You know, this razor feels like it's going to be likely to give you razor burn, even if you're being careful. Or lead to nicks or cuts. Well, fingers crossed. So far, absolutely no issues. You know, that's of course helped by the fact that this soap is a nice, dense, creamy, slick lather. It's another another new artisan on the scene, you know, offering some uh, some very nicely made soaps and in some scents that give you something a little bit different. I know there's lots of people that like a leather scent. And the combination of the leather and the cedar makes for me is a very nice, very kind of a warm, attractive, attractive scent. It's not a cologne scent at all but very, very pleasant. Scent strength, I'd say is mid. Um, it's there, but it's certainly not overpowering. Um, scent strength during the shave, uh, probably light to, light to mid. Definitely there, but not, not super strong. All right, I'm gonna just load just a little bit more. 
just dipping the tip of the brush into the sink just to get it wet a little bit, just to pick up a bit more soap. There's already quite a bit of sort of lather in there, well, early lather. Let's. You know, as you can see, no issue building the lather with the soap. Really enjoyed using it all week. Just gonna squeeze out a little bit of the lather, which as you can see, even though it's quite wet, it's still holding together very nicely. All right, let's see if this blade, let's see how it fares on pass number three. Yesterday I could definitely tell, or on Friday I could tell that it was getting a little bit, uh, it was getting there as they say. All right, let's see what happens. Final pass, this is going to be against the grain. Very light. Don't get fooled by the raspiness. Yeah, it's still doing okay. Gotta be careful right there because if you overshave when there's no lather there, even though there's a, a nice sort of residual slickness, you're gonna end up paying for it. That spot right there the last couple weeks has been what I would describe as recalcitrant. Just takes a bit more work to get it really good and clean. There we go. Yeah, a little bit more right there. Yeah, that blade is definitely at the uh, end of its rope, as it were. Used a, uh, a Vosh cut in there as well, and honestly, the same thing. It just, I think I only got three shaves out of it, and in the third, you could tell it's really starting to feel a little bit beat up. Stop right there. 
All right. Let's rinse. Now this is one of those soaps where it takes quite a bit to rinse it off. You know, it's another kind of a full fat slick soap, but you can see when you do this, there's a very nice slick hydrating layer there. Alternating single hand, starting off with double hand rinse method. You can go left, right, right, left. It doesn't really matter. All right. There we go. Let me just towel off a little bit. Yep, another, another very, very good shave with that razor. And the soap is, post-shave wise, very nice. As I said, that sort of residual slickness stays behind. Skin doesn't feel hot or dried out or tight really at all. Now, so the final piece, they also sent along the, uh, the matching aftershave. And this is a, another one of these mixes where it's alcohol, um, witch hazel, aloe vera, and glycerin. So the, the, the feel of this aftershave, when you apply it, um, it has that slight sort of slippery, but also tacky feel of the aloe vera. So if you don't like that feel, and I, and I know that a lot of people don't, then this one may not be the one for you because it does have that combination of slightly slick and slightly tacky at the same time. Now, I'm not gonna use that today because I've used it for the first three days. Every day that I've used it, I've had a brief two to four or so minute of kind of heat in my face. I know that I'm reacting very likely to the fragrance in there. The aftershave as an aftershave works fine. No issue with the impact on my skin. Generally speaking, once that heat goes away, it feels good. I always like the mix of the alcohol and the, uh, and the witch hazel but there's something in there, and I think I've had this at least once or twice this year as well, um, aftershave, whatever it is in the fragrance has caused my skin to be quite hot, so I've left it to the side for the moment. That's just my reaction to the fragrance um, as an aftershave in terms of the skin quality, no issues with that, uh, with that aspect of it. So I'm just gonna follow it up as I have for the last couple days with just a tiny bit of aftershave balm. Captain's Choice, Sandalwood. And this scent actually has mixed quite nicely with the uh, with the leather and the cedar from the uh, from the flying hide. And this just is a bit of extra hydration. Yep, beautiful, slick, very clean, easy shave. Yeah, very very nice. You got to be a little bit careful with that razor. So let's just let's just cover the highlights. Go through everything we've used for today. Let me just clean my hands off after the uh, aftershave balm. I would normally rinse my hands, but I won't do that right now. Okay, the standard, the razor for today, all aluminum. This is the black anodized version, three piece razor, no overhang to the blade. Um, very flat blade geometry. Big blade exposure, a lot of blade gap. This is in the scheme of things, in terms of the face feel, a pretty aggressive razor, at least for me. You can really feel the blade. It is a very loud razor, gentle, light touch, and I think you will be rewarded with a very good shave. If you don't like an aggressive razor, maybe this isn't for you. If you don't like this, so much feel of the blade on your face, but as you can see overall, a very simple, easy shave. Handle is not slippery in use. Um, it looks great. You're gonna get, depending on your water and the soap you're using, you are gonna get sort of the, uh, the white soap scum. I just clean the razor every day after I use it. Not hard to do. A nice razor. I don't know that it will be my my first choice, but I completely understand why people really like that razor. It is a clean design. It's easy to use. It gives a great shave. It offers a bit of an aggressive feel to the face. And if you only shave every couple days or you have a heavy beard growth and that works for you, just be aware of the fact that the blade is pretty flat and there can be a little bit of blade chatter in there. Um, and that's just uh, something you have to watch out for. Today's shave soap. Well, it's a thumbs up for me. I really have enjoyed using this during the week. It's a, a very nice, easy to lather soap, a thirsty soap. So you just need to work it a little bit. As I said, it is a tallowin lanolin based soap. So if you're sensitive to lanolin, just watch out for that. That does mean though that the post shave skin feel is, is up there. It's very, very nice, easy, slick lather. The scent is fantastic, at least for me. I like the smell of leather. This has the additional benefit of being sort of a working leather. I think they referenced in the description on the website something like a well-worn saddle, and I think that's a, a very good description. And the mix with the cedarwood and bergamot 
makes for a very, very nice scent. Easy to use, great post shave, recommended. The brush, well, you can't read it at all now because it's covered in lather, but the Restored Ever Ready 200 with a Maggard Razors Tuxedo Knot. A lot of backbone, very soft tips, easy to use. If you like a lot of splay in your brush, this is probably not the knot for you because it takes quite a bit of work to make it splay. And if it does splay and you're really scrubbing, you may end up with a bit of a, a bit of brush burn. Uh, but I love the way the razor looked and I like really like how the detail in the big like piece sort of came back to life. It was very grungy and dim and dark and just it looked worn and beat up and it has completely come back to life again. So for the person uh, on Reddit who helped me restore this brush, thank you again so much. Job very well done. Appreciate it. Aftershave, as I said, would have been this uh, flying hide. Again, a mixture of alcohol and witch hazel, which I do think is a great combo. Unfortunately for me, I just have a bit of a reaction, I think, to the uh, fragrance strength in there. So today's shave got closed out with a bit of the sandalwood from Captain's Choice. I think that's it. Four for four? I think so. Well, there you have it. That is going to be the last Sunday shave for a little bit, three weeks, probably as long as four weeks. I hope you guys can uh, can hold out uh, and I hope you don't miss me too much or maybe you won't miss me at all. Well, who knows? Uh, thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate the time you're taking to do this. Um, as always, please feel free to leave a comment or question against this video or any previous videos. Thank you again for watching and until next time, goodbye.